Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India A logical and a systematic approach to solving organic chemistry problems for CSIR net. In the module 1, IUPAC nomenclature of organic molecules including regio and stereo isomers will be covered. I am Dr. Balaji, currently working as associate professor in the School of Biotechnology at Jawaharlal Nehru University. This project is sponsored by DTH Swayamprabha, MHRD, New Delhi. Let me give a brief introduction about this course. This course is mainly based on CSAR net organic chemistry syllabus and here the target audiences are students who are preparing for organic chemistry competitive examinations. It may be CSAR net examination or it can also be GATE or even IIT jam all those examinations when the students are appearing they can actually learn through this particular course. And the topics or the syllabus covered include identifying the informations given, then we will do a stepwise analysis of reaction progress and we will carry out many worked out examples from various topics which includes various name reactions, reagents, rearrangements all those things will be covered in this particular course. Emphasis is mainly given to logical understanding and systematic approach to problem solving. So, before we get into the lecture, we will start with a few things what we have to remember. All chemical reactions are influenced by various factors. Let us look at what are the parameters that influence a chemical reaction and the reactivity of the molecules. So, there are four major things. I call this as four R of a chemical reaction. The first one is reactant. Reactant is nothing but the starting material which is getting converted in this process. Reagents are the one which help in the particular transformations and the reaction is affected by the rate. That means, if you are using any metal catalyst then the rate of the reaction is influenced by the presence of the catalyst. So, they affect the rate of a chemical reaction and finally, the reaction conditions. The reaction conditions include solvent, temperature and other parameters. So, let us look at all these things which influence a chemical reaction. When we talk about the reactant, the size, shape, nature, structure, the functional group all these things affect how a chemical reaction proceeds. And when we talk about reagents or even the starting material, the electronegativity is a very crucial factor that influences how a particular reaction proceeds. And when we talk about the reaction conditions, temperature, concentration of the reagent, reactant and the catalyst etcetera influence how the reaction actually proceeds. And the stability of the intermediates or the transition state also has a lot of influence on how the product distribution happens. Say for example, if there are two products A and B that can be formed in a particular reaction, then the stability of the intermediates as well as the stability of the product determine which one will be formed as a major product and which one will be formed as a minor product. So, these are all the various parameters that influence a reaction or the reactivity of the substrates. So, to deduce how a reaction actually proceeds, we will look at what are the important parameters that affect the reaction. Basically, the attainment of the octet configuration because here we are dealing with carbon atom. Organic chemistry mainly deals with carbon atom. Carbon atom belongs to the second row. So, there are maximum 8 electrons that can be reached to get the stability. So, we will be mainly focusing on the attainment of octet configuration which is the main deciding factor about how a reaction actually proceeds. And when we look at the substrate as we have mentioned the nature of the substrate whether it is a primary, secondary or a tertiary atom which functional groups are present and what is the structure, what is the functional group whether it is a carbonyl group, whether it is an ester, whether it is an aldehyde 
or it is an alcohol. So, all those things are influencing how the reaction actually proceeds. So, we will have to look at all these things in the substrate. And when we talk about the reagent, the reagent can be a nucleophile, it can be an electrophile or it can be a radical initiator or it can be oxidizing or reducing agent, it may be an acid or base. So, there are various types of reagents are there which influence how the reaction actually proceeds. And when we look at the reaction condition as we mentioned, the solvent plays a vital role, the dipolar nature favors some type of intermediate. Say for example, if we have a polar solvent, we also have a non-polar solvent. The polar solvent facilitates formation of polar intermediates and the non-polar solvents facilitates formation of non-polar intermediate. An example of a polar intermediate can be a carbocation or a carbanion. And for the non-polar intermediates, we can think of radicals or even carbenes. So, these are all the different intermediates which are influenced by the solvent that is present. And of course, concentration plays a vital role in deciding between inter and intramolecular reactions. And similarly, the temperature influences the stability of the products formed. So, we have kinetic control of a reaction as well as thermodynamic control of the reaction, both are influenced by the temperature. So, these are all the various parameters that is environmental parameters which affect how a chemical reaction proceeds. And when we have to decide about what is the major product or a minor product, we look at stability of the product that is formed. So, the stability decides which one will be the major product and which one will be the minor product. And there are also various exception to the regular rules that are being followed. Say for example, we have a Markovnikov addition as well as we have anti Markovnikov addition. We have sides of rule, we also have Hoffman rule. So, organic chemistry is filled with lots of exceptions and we also have to be very careful in deciding which particular process actually operates for that particular reaction. So, let us get into the worked out problems. So, in the first problem, we will be looking at the correct IUPAC nomenclature or the name for the given following molecule is. So, here four answers are given A 1 propyl 2 ethyl 4 4 dimethyl cyclohept 1 gene and B is 2 ethyl 4 4 dimethyl 1 propyl cyclohept 1 gene and C is 3 ethyl 1 1 dimethyl 4 propyl cyclohept 3 in and D is 1 1 dimethyl 3 ethyl 4 propyl cycloheptene. So, if we are going to solve this problem, let us look at what are all the important things we have to look. So, we need to identify what is the main chain for this particular compound. And we have to find the longest continuous chain of carbons containing the multiple bond. So, here is the structure which is given in the question. So, we look at this particular structure. So, the first name given is 1 propyl. So, that means we have to start the numbering from this carbon 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So, there are 7 carbons present in this molecule. And you may have a question like I mean why we have to start from this particular carbon, why not the other carbons? Yes, we will come to that later. So, when we look at the second structure, so here the ethyl group is present in two positions. So, that means here again 1, 2, 3. In the fourth position, we have dimethyl groups 5, 6, 7. So, these two compounds have a very similar name. The only difference we will have to see what is the difference between these two names. We will move to the next one. So, here the numbering is 3 ethyl. So, how do we give 3 position to this ethyl? So, we have to start from this dimethyl group. So, that is why it is given 1 and dimethyl. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and 7. So, 
this name starts with the dimethyl unit as the starting point and if you look at the last one the only difference is here the 3 ethyl group comes first and in this one the 1 1 dimethyl group came first. So, is there any difference? The only difference is the alphabetical ordering of substituents. The important thing what we have to remember is if you are going to number or identify the main chain, we should not start from the side chain. This unit is a side chain, this is also another side chain. So, this side chain and this is the ring structure. So, the ring and the side chain should be treated separately. We cannot start the number from here say 1, 2, 3, then we go through this ring 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 and 10. Like that we cannot continue within the ring. So, whenever we are giving a name for a cyclic and a side chain system, we have to identify which one is the longest chain. So, here the ring has 7 atoms and the side chain has only 3 carbon atoms. So, between 7 and 3 we are very sure 7 is the longest one. So, here the longest name given is cyclohept3ene. So, that is the name given for this compound. So, that is fine. And now, we have to find out the locant rule. So, the substituent should always get the lowest number. So, according to that rule, here we have 2 methyl groups as a substituent, we have a propyl group as a substituent, we have a ethyl group as a substituent. So, this is PR, this is ET and this is ME. So, the longest chain has to get the lowest number. So, here the longest chain is the propyl unit. So, this should get the lowest number followed by the second one which is the ethyl. And of course, we know here there is a multiple bond. So, the compound is actually named as an alkene and this is having 7 carbons in it. So, it is a cyclohepteptene system and as I mentioned the propyl has to get the lowest locant rule according to that we give number 1 to this particular carbon and then it is followed by the second ethyl unit that is given the number 2 then 3 and 4, 4 is given the dimethyl. So, if we look at uh, how to name this compound 1 propyl 2 ethyl 4 4 dimethyl cyclohept 1 gene is the right name. If you look at the second one, it is 2 ethyl 4 4 dimethyl 1 propyl cyclohept 1 gene. So, these two are exactly the right name of the compound, but which one is the correct name? Then we have to go to the main thing which is the alphabetical order. So, accordingly the ethyl group has E comes before propyl group which is P. So, that means the correct name for this compound should be the B 1. So, this is the correct name for this particular compound. So, let us go to the next worked out example. So, in this case also we have some multiple bonds. So, here again the question is give the correct IUPAC nomenclature or the IUPAC norm for the following molecule. So, we have a alkyne unit, we have an alkene unit. and we have a carboxylic acid unit. So, there are 3 different functional groups are there. So, we when we are going to name this compound, we have to include all the functional groups in this particular one. So, let us look at uh, what are the different names given here. And of course, there is a chiral center in this particular molecule. So, we also need to assign whether it is a R isomer or an S isomer. So, if you look at the name given A is R 3 prop 2 enyl hex 5 inoic acid and B is again R and S only the configuration difference is there the name remains the same. And if you go to C this is R 3 prop 2 inyl hex enoic acid. So, we have 2 different names. So, the carboxylic acid gets the highest priority, but the next one is whether in that is the alkyne unit or in that is the alkene unit. 
So, which should get the priority in the naming? So, that is what we have to see in this particular example. So, if you look at the structure, we have to identify what is the longest chain rule. So, as we know carboxylic acid is the highest priority group. So, we start from here number 1, then we can go to the second one, then this is third. So, in the third one we have two branching possible. So, let me draw the two branching. So, it can be 1, 2, 3, then it can be 4, 5 and 6, this is one type of branching or 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So, in both the cases the longest chain is only 6 carbon units. So, that means, hex is actually the right name and oic acid is also the right name. So, now we have to only finalize whether it is in or it is ein. So, that is the only thing we will have to find it out. So, according to the IUPAC nomenclature rule, the alkene gets priority over alkyne. So, in that case, how do we give the name for this compound? We have to give alkyne gets lower priority, alkene gets higher priority. So, when it gets high, higher priority, the name should be given as enoic acid. And now, we have to only find out whether it is a R isomer or S isomer. So, how do we know that? We have to now find out what is the highest priority group. We know hydrogen is the least priority group. So, we can put this as a 4 and we have carbon 1, carbon 2, carbon 3, 3 carbons are there and this carbon is attached to the carboxylic acid. So, this gets the highest priority. So, this will be given as 1 and between these two which one will get the highest priority we will have to see. So, here there are only two carbon atoms attached here, here it is 3. So, 3 uh, alkyne means 3 bonds are there, here 2 bonds are there. So, between that this will give, get the next priority, this will get uh, the lowest priority and the least priority group is far away from us. So, we can give that name as 1, 2, 3. So, this 1, 2, 3 is in the counter clockwise direction. When it is counter clockwise direction, this is the S isomer. So, S is there and uh, as we know alkene gets the priority. So, enoic acid is the name which should be given and the correct name for this compound is circled here that D that is S 3 propent 2 ile hex 5 enoic acid is the compound. So, let us move on to the next problem. Here we have to identify the correct IUPAC name for the following molecule. So, here one of the difference from what we have seen earlier is we have a heteroatom. So, here the heteroatom is boron. So, now the main question comes into our mind is should the boron be included in the numbering or we should not include the boron in the numbering. So, if we look at the names four names are given here. So, let us look at what are the number of carbons we will see. In one case nonane, nonane means there are 9 carbon atoms and the second one is octane, octane means there are 8 carbon atoms. So, let us count what are all the different number of carbon atoms. We will we will start from here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and 8. So, 8 carbon atoms are there. So, this is not the right IUPAC uh, numbering. I am just counting only the number of carbon atoms. So, we have 8 carbon atoms present in this molecule. So, first we will think since there are 8 carbon atoms should we go with the octane number or not. Let us look at uh, how to name this compound. So, when we are uh, since this is a cyclic structure we have to find out how to name the compound. If you look here we have something written in the bracket. So, we will have to look at what is this numbers and how we can actually identify what is the right numbering. So, this is one additional things we have to look in when we are looking at bridged systems. So, bridged systems follow a different type of numbering and a name. So, let us look at what are they. 
So, here we have to identify how many rings are present and this is actually found by the number of scissions that means, how many times we actually break that to get a open chain compound. Here we have to count all the carbon atoms. So, these are all the two major things we have to remember when we have a bridged systems. We have to find out how many scissions that means, how many breaks we have to make to make the cyclic system into a open chain system. So, here is the compound which is written here and let me show how the breaking actually takes place. So, we take a scissor and we cut this particular bond. So, when we cut this bond actually this becomes one less bond is removed. So, that means, we are going to a open chain system. So, we are starting from the cyclic system to making it a open chain system. So, now this bond will be broken to get a completely open chain system. Now, if you look at this is the complete open chain system, there is no bridge, uh, there is no cyclic system involved in it. So, this is the first thing we have to do, remove all the or uh, cut the bonds whichever uh, is present to make it a open chain system. Once we do that, then we will have to count how many carbons are there. So, let me start from here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So, total 8 carbons are there and of course, we have a boron atom, hetero atom is also involved in this particular case. So, this is how the whole molecule is written and here we have to identify few more additional things in the case of cyclic systems. So, what are they? We need to identify what is the main ring, then we have to identify what is the main bridge and how many secondary bridges are there because you had seen the number 3 comma 3 comma 1. Okay. So, those 3 3 1 are basically the main bridge and secondary bridges. So, that is how we are actually going to name this compound and the main ring shall be divided as symmetrically as possible by the main bridges. So, here we have 1, 2, 3. So, 3 at carbon atoms are present in this particular unit this is one of the bridge and there is also another bridge 1, 2, 3. So, we again have another 3 more atoms. So, this first one is 1, 3, the second one is another 3 and we have 1. So, the 1 is nothing but the boron atom which is also involved in that bridge. So, if we start from this bridge head to this bridge head, we have a 3 carbon unit which is connecting from one side we have another 3 carbon unit that is connecting from the second side, we have one boron atom instead of carbon, we have a hetero atom that is connecting this bridge. So, this compound has 3 bridges and the 3 bridges are given by the numbers 3, 3, 1. Now, we have identified the numbers 3, 3, 1 is the correct number and we also know whether it is a nonane or octane is the only thing we will have to confirm. So, for this particular compound, the boron is also included in the numbering. So, that is the reason if you look at the name, the bora is actually included in the naming of this compound. So, that means, that hetero atom is also involved in the naming. So, the numbering if we start with, this is getting the least number. So, alkane gets the least number according to the IUPAC nomenclature. Since, this is a hetero atom, here in this hetero atom boron gets the lowest number than the alkane unit. So, the 9 position is given to the borane or the boron molecule. So, the number is, it is not 1, the numbering does not start from the number 1, because since it is included, we can rule out the name octanes. Both octanes are ruled out, because boron is included in the naming. So, whether it is 9 position or 1 position is the only thing, should we start the numbering from boron or end the numbering with the boron. So, this is not the right way of IUPAC nomenclature, we have to keep the boron as the least priority group. So, the name for this particular compound is 9 bora bicyclo 3 3 1 nonane. So, 3 3 1 means here 1 carbon, 2 carbon, 3 carbon. So, this is one of the bridge. So, the number 3, 1, 2, 3, another 3 carbon. So, this is the second bridge and there is one boron that is the third number 1. 
and it is always written with dots it is not written with comma. So, 3 dot 3 dot 1 is the numbering we have to follow for these kind of bridged or cyclic systems. So, let us move on to the next one which is the another uh, tricyclic system. So, here we have to find out the name for this particular compound this appeared in June 2018 uh, net examination. So, the name four different names are given here tricyclo. So, we have to identify what is the three uh, rings that are present here and the total number of carbon is given as pentane. So, in all the cases it is given as the pentane. So, we can also find out how many carbons are there here carbon number 1. I am not going by the IUPAC uh, numbering I am just counting the numbers of carbons only 2, 3, 4 and 5. So, there are total 5 carbons. So, the pentane name is fine and this is a tricyclic system. So, tricyclo is fine. So, this is common in all the cases. Now, the only difference occurs within the bracket. So, here we have 1 1 1 0 then we have something called the superscript 2 comma 4 some number is given and in another case we have 1 1 0 then 1 superscript 1 comma 3 is given and in other two cases also we have three numbers and then there is a number with some superscript numbers are given. So, we have to find out what are these things and how to name the compound exactly using this particular nomenclature. So, let us look at the solution as previously we have seen we have to identify the number of rings basically based on the number of scissions or how many times we cut the molecule to get a open chain system and here we have to count all the carbon atom. So, we first break this particular bond and you have to make sure you should not lose any carbons while you are breaking the bond. So, otherwise we will be having a less number of carbon atoms. So, make sure when you break that or remove that bond you take only one bond at a time. So, first bond is removed and the highlighted second bond is removed in the second case and uh, this leads to this kind of open uh, structure still it has one more bond is present here. So, let us cut the third bond and we end up with the this kind of open chain system. So, let us uh, put the numbering here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, this is the same number 5 we have seen that. So, the compound is basically the pentane the pentane longest carbon chain here is basically the pentane unit. And now as we had seen in the earlier case we have to identify what is the main ring then the main bridge then the secondary bridges. So, all these things are very similar to the one what we have seen earlier, but there is one more additional thing because in this case we have three bridges are there instead of the two which we have seen in the previous case. So, here the superscripts are locating the other bridges that shall be as small as possible. So, that is the only thing we have to see now and while we start the numbering we can start from any carbon, but the superscript should be given the lowest number and this should be the lowest uh, bridge of that carbon. Say for example, if you look at uh, we have one bridge structure there are three different colors given one is the orange color one. So, this is one bridged structure and we also have a purple or a light maroon color one is there. So, there is also uh, this also is a bridged structure and we also have a green color one. So, these are all the three bridges and apart from that there is a red one which is in the center that also is present say for example, this one I have shown here. So, we have multiple connections and this one is basically the smallest connection all the other thing has one carbon atom extra, but in the in this particular connection we have 0 carbon atom between these two bridges. So, this will be the smallest see all the other it has to be the smallest bridge with the superscripts locating that bridge. So, according to that if we have to give the number then let us start with there is one carbon here. So, one is fine another carbon here another one is fine another carbon here another one is fine. So, this number is ok and if we come here this also has 1 1 1. So, that is also fine 
here it is 110. So, this name is wrong because here we cannot have the uh, 0 bridge as the main bridge number. So, this is ruled out this name we cannot have the other thing is like 111. So, this is also fine. So, tricyclo is correct name 111 3 bridges are also correct name. Now, we have to only look at 0 and 1. So, as we have seen in the previous one the smallest bridge should get the smallest number. So, that means, 0 is an acceptable number. So, this one is already ruled out we do not have to look into that. This is also having 0, but this one is having 2 connections. So, it is not possible in this particular case. So, this name is also ruled out. Now, we have left out with only 2 names which we have to confirm which one is the correct num name and as you know the bridge also has to get the smallest number. So, here is 2 and 4 is a higher number compared to 1 and 3. So, the 1 and 3 should be given the smallest number. So, in that case the name for this compound is tricyclo 111013 pentane. Okay. Let us look at the next one. Here in this particular case we are going to look at the name for the compound given here. So, there are double bonds given an alcohol unit, 2 alcohol units are present, we also have a halogen substituent. So, what is going to get the highest priority we have to see, we know alcohol gets the highest priority of all the groups present here. So, the name should end with diol, so that is fine. So, how many carbons are there? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. So, this is a hexa, 6 carbons are there. So, all the carbons, uh, all the names have the hexa unit and the diol is also present and the alcohol unit is present at the beginning and the end. So, they are basically 1, 6 diols. So, that is also same and if you look at the which end will get the lowest number, we have to give the lowest uh, locant rule for the alkene unit here. So, this will get the lowest number 2. So, that means, we have to start from this end of the molecule. So, 2 and 4 are the alkene units. So, 2, 4 diene is also the one which is given in all the compounds. So, if you look at and the chloro is also on the 3 1. So, that means, if you look at all the structures, they all have the same name. The only thing different is the E or Z isomer. So, that means, whether it is a cis or trans isomer is the only thing that is difference in all the four cases. So, first we have to look at this particular unit. So, we have a double bond and we have a carbon, here we have a hydrogen unit which is not written and here we have a chlorine atom, here we have a carbon atom. So, if you look at uh, giving the highest priority rule, chlorine has the highest number in this particular carbon. So, this gets a priority 1, carbon is the second one. So, this gets a priority 2 and the carbon here has the highest priority, hydrogen here gets the lowest priority. So, if you look at both are on the same side, the lowest priority groups are on the same side. So, this is nothing but the Z isomer. So, that means, the 2 carbon should be Z isomer. So, that means, we can rule out this name and we can also rule out this name. So, now we have only 2 names which contains 2 Z. Now, let us move on to the next one. So, here we have a double bond with the hydrogen atom, here we have a carbon unit, here we have a hydrogen unit, here we have another carbon unit. So, let us give the same highest priority rule. So, for this carbon we have this carbon as number highest priority 1, this as 2 and in the other carbon this gets the highest priority, this one gets the lowest priority. So, C and C they are in the opposite side or it is called the E isomer. So, this is the fourth carbon that alkene carbon. So, this is having the E configuration. So, between these two which one has the E configuration? B only has the E configuration. So, 
the compound name is basically the 2 Z and 4 E 3 chlorohexa 2 4 diene 1 6 diol. So, this is the name for this particular compound. Let us look at the next problem. So, in this problem we have a hydroxy unit, we have a alkene, we also have a phenyl unit. So, all the three are given. Let us look at uh, the number of carbon atoms 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and 7. So, there are 7 carbon atoms are there. If you look at the aromatic ring, aromatic ring only has 6 carbons. So, that means, even if you have to name this compound as a substituent of benzene, we only have 6 carbon atoms in this particular unit, but the side chain has 7 carbon atoms. So, the highest priority is only for the side chain. So, the name is hept and 3 in 2 all. If you look at the numbering, the alcohol is in the second position, the alkene is in the alkene double bond is in the third position. So, and in the seventh carbon the phenyl unit is present. So, here again if you look at the same name for all the compounds, here all of them have the same ending. So, 7 phenyl hept 3 in 2 all. So, the only difference is whether it is a R isomer and here we have R and S isomer and E and Z isomer. So, we have a cis trans isomers and configurational isomer whether it is R or S. So, we have two different types of compounds present uh, can be named for this particular compound. So, let us look at uh, whether it is a R or S isomer. Let us draw the structure here. We have OH and here we have a methyl group, here we have a alkene bond and what is not written is basically the hydrogen. And if you look at in this structure, the alcohol is actually pointing backwards or away from the observer. So, this is back and if we have to give the highest priority for all the four groups. So, alcohol oxygen gets the highest priority number 1 and then here we have carbon with an alkene unit. So, this gets the second priority and this is a methyl carbon with uh, 3 hydrogens. This gets the third priority and uh, the hydrogen is the fourth priority. So, if you look at uh, the groups 1, 2 and 3, they are in the clockwise direction. So, for clockwise direction it should be actually R, but as I mentioned the hydroxy group is away from the observer. So, when it is away from the observer and when the lowest priority group is pointing towards the observer, we have to inverse the configuration. So, instead of R, this is basically a S isomer. So, out of all the things, the second position S is basically this one and this one. So, the first two names are ruled out because this is not the name for this compound and this is a 2 S isomer. Let us move on to the alkene unit. So, we have a double bond written like this. Here is a carbon, here is a hydrogen and here again there is a hydrogen, here there is a carbon unit with alcohol. So, according to the CIP rule for each carbon we can give the highest priority. So, this carbon gets the highest priority here, hydrogen gets the lowest one and here carbon gets the highest priority, this one gets the lowest priority. So, the highest priority groups are present in the opposite side. So, this is nothing but the E isomer. So, the 2 S is basically the second position and this alkene unit is a E isomer. So, that means the compounds name is basically 2 S 3 E 7 phenyl hept 3 in 2 all. Let us look at the worked out problem 7. We are going to find out what is the correct IUPAC name for the following molecule. This question was asked in this question was asked in June 2019. So, here we are going to see what are the different uh, functional groups that are present. We have a carbonyl unit, 
we have a ethyl ester and we also have a methyl substituent methyl. So, these are all the three substituents that are present and we also have a alkene. So, this is a six membered ring. So, this is nothing but the hexane unit and we have the alkene also is present here. So, four choices are given or four different names are given. The first one is ethyl 1 R 2 methyl 4 oxo cyclohex 2 ene carboxylate. So, that is the first name. In the other case, this is 1 S isomer. So, the only difference is whether it is a R isomer or S isomer is the only thing. And uh, option C and D is given as ethoxy carbon carbonyl 3 methyl cyclohex in own. So, in other words, two priorities are given one in which the carboxylic acid is given as the carboxylate anion and in the other case the ketone is given as the highest priority. So, we know exactly the acids have highest priority compared to the ketones. So, this ester group gets a priority over the carbonyl group. So, C and D are completely ruled out it is not going to be the name because they have the ketone or the enone as the highest priority name. So, that is not the right one. So, we can rule out these two. Now, we have to only find out whether it is the first one or in the second one. So, in the first one or the second one also uh, most of the name uh, is exactly the same. So, we have to only look for whether it is a R isomer or S isomer. By identifying that we can easily or quickly solve this problem. Of course, if we have to elaborately study that also we will see in the last step. So, here we have four functionalities. This is the chiral carbon or the stereogenic carbon. We are going to see how we are going to give the numbering for this one. So, here we have a carbon. The first unit of attachment is carbon here and the second unit of attachment is also carbon third unit of attachment is also carbon. So, we have three carbons as the first unit of attachment to this chiral center. So, we have to go to the second atom based on that we are going to say whether it is uh, which is going to get the highest priority. Here we have a carbon oxygen is present as the sex second unit. So, we can say the carboxylic acid gets the highest priority one. And then we have the second priority between these two carbon atoms, we have a double bond. So, what we can say is each double bond uh, can be considered as a two phantom atoms. So, the phantom atom means the second atom is basically going to be the carbon atom here in this particular carbon. Here these two are hydrogen atoms only. So, we can say this carbon will get the second priority and this carbon will get the third priority and of course, the fourth the least priority hydrogen is away from the observer. So, how these three groups are actually present 1, 2, 3 they are in the anti clockwise direction. So, we can say this is going to be the S isomer and obviously, the answer is going to be the S isomer. So, the name for this compound is ethyl 1 S 2 methyl 4 oxo cyclohex 2 ene carboxylate. So, how to give the name? Basically, the carboxylate is the highest priority uh, is the parent uh, chain in this particular case. So, the carboxylic acid or carboxylate is given the uh, parent name. So, we have the carboxylate unit and the ethyl is the ester that is formed. So, the ethyl ester is given in the beginning and we have substituents. So, uh, this is going to be the first carbon, this is the next carbon because we have a C6 unit. So, the numbering starts from here, uh, the alkene unit gets the lowest low control. So, this is 2, this is 3 and the carbonyl is in the fourth position. So, with that uh, we can conclude the name what it is going to be. In the second position we have a methyl unit. So, that is 2 methyl and in the fourth position we have a carbonyl unit that is the 4 oxo and uh, this is nothing but the cyclohexane C 6 membered cyclic system. So, cyclohex and in the second carbon we have the alkene unit. So, that is given as ene and carboxylate that is how we can give the name for this particular compound. So, the next problem here how many structural isomers are possible for the methyl bicyclo 2 2 2 octane system? Four numbers are given 1, 2, 3 and 4. Let us look at the structure of this compound. So, when we say methyl, 
there is a substituent methyl group and it is a bicyclo system. So, that is the structure drawn here and there are 2, 2, 2 bridges are there. So, we have 1, 2, 1, 2 and 1, 2. So, there are 3, 2 carbon bridges which are connecting this particular compound in this uh, cyclic system and it is a octane. Octane means the total number of 8 carbon atoms are there. So, if we count here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 and 9. The ninth one is basically given as the methyl substituent. So, if we remove this methyl substituent, we have total 8 carbon atoms and the one group that is the extra methyl group is given as the substituent name. So, this is a bicyclic system with octane, 8 carbon atoms are there. So, here we have to find out what are all the structural isomers that are possible. So, here we have a methyl group that can be drawn here at this top, then we can also draw a methyl group here in the another ring and we can also draw the methyl group in this ring. So, we can draw three different uh, structures like this and there is also a fourth one where the methyl group is present in the bridge head. So, we have total four different structures possible. So, does it mean uh, we have to give the answer as four? But unfortunately, if you look little bit carefully, the structure 1 and 2 and 3 are nothing but one and the same structures. If you look very carefully, one of the carbons which is away from the bridge is having the methyl group. Here also if you look at, this is away from the bridge head. This is also away from the bridge head and in all the cases, we have only 2, 2 carbon. So, this is simply we are folding the structure in different forms that does not make it a new structure. So, all the three structures are one and the same structure or they are the equivalent structures and here the methyl group is not present in the bridge head position. So, that is one isomer and there is another isomer where the methyl group is present in the bridge head position 2. So, the total number of isomers uh, that is structural isomers possible for this structure is 2. So, like that we can solve this particular problem. Let us recap what we have seen in the summary. So, we have seen the IUPAC naming of various compounds. We have also seen about how the bridged structures can be named. We have seen how RS configuration is given. We have also seen E is it notation according to the CIP rule how it can be given. So, all those things we have seen with that we conclude this session on IUPAC nomenclature. Thank you.